Hello friends, in this tutorial video, I'll explain the procedure to create a three-dimensional model of this boat using AutoCAD software. We have, in fact, three different options to create a 3D model using AutoCAD software. We have solid, surface and mesh modeling techniques. In this tutorial, I'll make use of the mesh modeling technique using which we will create the hull shape of this boat using the edsurf command in the primitives panel. Using this command, we can create complex surfaces and produce interesting results. Please refer my tutorial on creating a 3D curtain if you don't have a basic idea on edsurf command. I have provided the link in the upper right corner of the screen. Please go through that video before exploring this tutorial. So let's get started. Let me switch over to the top view. When you look at the shape of the boat in the top view, you can see that it's symmetrical about the horizontal as well as about the vertical axis. So instead of creating the entire model, I'll create just quarter portion or one fourth of it. Then I'll give mirror command to generate the entire model. I'll start by creating this particular profile first. So I'll open a new file. I'll turn off the grid. You should make sure that the 3D modeling interface is active. Now I'll start a polyline from this particular point. Now I'll right click to go to arc option. I'll right click again. Then I'll select second point and I'll pick a point somewhere over here. Then I'll pick this particular point. Then again arc. Now I'll just come back to the line mode. Right click and choose line. Activate the ortho mode on. Then I'll pick to define the end point of this polyline. So this is my first profile. Now I'll switch over to the southwest isometric view. Then I'll change my viewport configuration by clicking on this hyphen sign over here. Then I'll choose three left. When you take this configuration, you will get a major viewport on the left side and two smaller viewports on the right side. Next, I'll create the profile of the boat as you see from the front side. So I'll generate a front elevation in this viewport. So just click here and choose front. Then I'll create another polyline starting from this end point. Then turn off the ortho mode, then go to right click and choose arc option, then right click again and choose second point. The reason why I go for second point is to guide the curvature of the arc through my desired location. So I want this arc to come through this particular point. Hence, I'll get a better control over the shape of the arc. Then pick to define the end point and this arc is pretty okay. So I don't have to change the curvature. So no need to go to second point option. We can pick to define the end point here. Then I'll switch over to the line mode. So right click choose line. Then I need a point corresponding to this right underneath. So just track to get that point. So I'll just keep my cursor over here. Then activate the tracking. You can press F11 function key if the tracking is not active. Okay, now I'll just pick to define it. So that profile is also defined. Next, I'll create a third profile connecting these two endpoints. Okay, for that, I'll generate a left side elevation in this viewport. So this particular profile corresponds to this profile which you see on top. And this vertical line corresponds to this profile which you have drawn just now. Next, I'll go to polyline again. Now I'll start a polyline exactly from this endpoint. Now I'll activate this viewport. Now I would like to draw a line segment. So activate the ortho mode on. Then just pick a point somewhere over here. That's a straight segment. Then you go to arc option. Then turn off the ortho mode. Then you go to second point because I want to control the curvature. I'll pick a point somewhere over here. And you can pick an end point here. So this is the third profile. Now these three profiles define one fourth of the shape of the hull of the boat. Next, I'll create an edge served mesh connecting these edges. But the edge command needs four edges. We have created only three. 
So using the break command, you can split any of this edge into two edges so that you will get all together four. So I'll give break command. You can type the letter BR for break. So it'll ask you to select object. I'll just click a point somewhere over here. So in the break command, when you select the object, you not only select the object to be broken, but you specify the first break point. Now it'll ask you for the second break point. I want the second break point to be the same as the first one. So you can use the shortcut key at the rate sign. Because AutoCAD interprets at the rate as the last point. So just type at the rate and give an enter. Now when you click over here, you can see that this particular segment is broken at this point and hence altogether you have four edges. Next I'll click on mesh tab, then I'll click on the edge surf command. Now it'll ask you to select the first edge, second edge, third edge and the fourth edge. It has created a mesh, but it's almost segmented. When you go to shaded representation, you can see that it's segmented. Okay you have to increase the number of faces in this mesh. So I'll undo the edge of command. Now we have two variables in mesh modeling which controls the density of mesh or the number of faces generated in the horizontal as well as in the vertical direction. The number of faces generated in the horizontal direction is controlled by the surf tab 1 variable. So I'll give surf tab 1 and I'll give the value 25. Then I'll go to surf tab 2 variable which controls the number of faces in the vertical direction. Then I'll give the value 25. Okay, now I'll repeat the edge surf command. I'll select the first edge, second edge, third edge and the fourth edge. Now it's a smooth mesh. Next, I'll switch over to the single viewport configuration. Okay, now I'll go to the plan view. Next, you can mirror this quarter portion of the mesh to generate the entire hull of the boat. So I'll go to mirror command and I'll select the entire set of objects using a standard window. And this is my first point on the mirror line. And this is my second point on the mirror line. Next, I'll repeat the mirror command. So right click and repeat mirror and select the entire objects. And this is the first point on the mirror line. Now second point on the mirror line, you can pick over here. Now it's a perfect vertical axis. Just go to southwest isometric view and see the shape of the hull of the boat which you have created. Change the display representation to realistic and you can see what you have done. It is an exact shape of the hull of a boat. Next I'll create a border on top. In order to create this border, I'm going to make use of the profiles which we have already created. But while you work with these profiles, these meshes might interfere with your object selection. So I'll erase these meshes for the time being using the erase command. Then I'll go to join option, go to modify panel and just click on join. Then you select all these profiles using a crossing window. Okay. Just give an enter. Now you can see that it's a single profile. Next, I'll give an offset and I'll give an offset distance by picking two points because I've drawn everything without giving any dimensions. So I'll just pick two points to specify the offset distance and the distance between these two points will be taken as that distance value. This is the object to offset and pick a point on this desired side. Next, I'll apply press pull command between these two profiles to create a surface from here. So I'll just move my mouse slightly in the upward direction and I'll pick a point here so that that distance will again be taken as the height of extrusion. Next, I would like to get those erased meshes back so you can give the oops command for that. Because you know oops restores the most recently erased set of objects. But if you erase a set of objects with the intention to get these objects back using the oops command, you should not erase any other objects while you work. Next I'll create these cross members which you see over here. But before you create the cross members, you can erase the meshes just as you have done before. So I'll go to erase command. When I'm asked to select objects, you don't have to select these meshes again. Instead, you can use the shortcut key P. 
P stands for previous. AutoCAD memorizes the previous selection. So I'll erase it. Next, I'll change my display representation to 2D wireframe. Then I'll create a rectangle with this particular point as the first corner. Then I'll simply drag to specify this nearest point as the second point. I'll change the display representation back to realistic. Then I'll extrude this rectangle. Okay, through a small distance. It should be slightly below the extrusion of the border which you have done before. Okay, next using the array command, I will generate multiple copies of this. So I'll click on rectangular array, select this object, then you can go to the row option. I need only a single row. So I click on rows and, and give the value one for the number of rows. Then you can just give an enter and give one more enter. Now click on the array object and you will get a ribbon which represents all the parameter corresponding to the array. I need say nine columns. Then at the distance between individual column, I'll make as say 640. This is just a random value. Now you can see that you have got more numbers. So you can reduce the columns to seven. Okay, you can just close the array. Now you can again make use of the oops command to get those erased meshes back. Now you can give a proper color. But before you give a color, you have to explode the array object because you know that array object will remain as a single unit. And only if you explode it, you'll be able to change any property related with the array object. So I'll give X command for explode and just give an enter after selecting the array object. Next, I'll select this entire object using a standard window. Then I'll press Ctrl 1 to get the properties panel. Then I'll choose this particular color, color 23 or any desired color of your choice. And hence, we have completed the 3D model of a boat. Hope this tutorial was interesting and you have got a number of useful information related with mesh modeling. That's all about this tutorial. Please hit the like button below this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel. Until I catch you in the next tutorial, bye bye and take care. Thanks for your time.